Claudius Hart Houston was a prominent industrialist and politician from the U.S. state of Tennessee. He became a leader in the development of the Tennessee River. Mr. Houston was born in Boone Township, Harrison Country, Indiana. He attended a rural one-room schoolhouse in Valparaiso University. He earned his tuition with a $30 a month teaching post and by working as a farm hand. In 1897 he arrived in Chattanooga in a freight car as custodian of a cousin's cattle and horses. Shortly afterwards, he moved and made his home in Chattanooga, Tennessee where he later obtained his B.S. degree from University of Chattanooga. He made his first business venture in 1900 as a manufacturer of saw mill machinery and subsequently became a factor in furniture manufacturing, textile plants and stamped steelware. He became associated with various lobbying houses in Tennessee and Alabama. In 1920, Houston, a Republican, was the chairman of the Republican Ways and Means Committee for Tennessee and later chairman of the Finance and Advisory Committee of the Republican State Committee when Tennessee broke the Solid South by casting, for the first time, a majority of votes for Warren G. Harding, then Republican candidate for president in 1920. In 1921, President Harding appointed Houston to position of Assistant U.S. Secretary of Commerce to Secretary Herbert Hoover. They became good friends before Houston left that position in 1923 to return to private business when he began the reorganization of the Transcontinental Oil Company in New York. Later Houston played a key role in the presidential nomination of Herbert Hoover at the Kansas City Republican National Convention in 1928. Houston had a reputation as a dexterous campaign fundraiser for the Republican National Committee and was President Hoover's personal choice to succeed Hubert Work as RNC chairman in 1930, but only after Senate Republicans also expressed their satisfaction with Houston. A prominent political and business leader from Tennessee, Houston was expected to take advantage of Hoover's strong support in the Southern presidential electorate in 1928 to reorganize and build the party organization there. During his life, Houston was president of Transcontinental Oil Co., the Tennessee River Navigation Co., Chattanooga Manufacturing Association, Chattanooga Chamber of Commerce, Lee Highway Association, and three wholesale jobbing houses in Tennessee. He was vice president of the Dixie Highway Associations and chair of the executive committee of the University of Chattanooga, official in ironworking, woodworking and textile industries of Tennessee. He was director of Chattanooga Trust Co., vice president, First National Bank, First Trust and Saving Bank, all of Chattanooga, and chairman of executive committee of University of Chattanooga, and for many years was advisor for the financial interests of the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers. He was a member of Masonic Order, all orders including 33rd degree honorary Scottish Rite Mason. Houston also headed the Tennessee River Improvement Association, which maintained a Washington, D.C. lobby to oppose government operation of a $150 million power plant, built during World War I to make nitrates for gunpowder. The association favored acceptance of some private bid for the plant's use and Houston sent more than $156,000 to his office in Washington, D.C. within a four-year period. In 1928, he greatly helped write the Muscle Shoals plank in bipartisan platforms. His association lobbied for the Muscle Shoals bid of the American Cyanamid Co., under which Union Carbide Co. would get a share of surplus Muscle Shoals power. In 1930, Mr. Houston became involved in the Senate Lobby Committee's investigation of various influences to obtain possession of the government's Muscle Shoals power and fertilizer project. It was testified that the Tennessee River Improvement Association of which Mr. Houston had been president was one of the organizations that had been exerting pressure. As a result of the inquiry, Mr. Houston resigned as Republican National Committee Chairman August 7, 1930. His daughter Alice married Fulton Lewis, a famous national radio broadcaster from Washington, D.C. External links Political Graveyard The Nation, September 25, 1929 New York Times Time Magazine March 31, 1930 Time Magazine August 4, 1930 Time Magazine March 15, 1943 Manuscripts and Archives, Yale University Library